Hey guys, Mike here with EverythingAboutConcrete.com. It's a Saturday. I'm headed out to check out a job we got to pour on Monday. Now this is going to be a inch and a half thick floor over plywood. So we're pouring right over the first deck of the house. It's got a basement under it. And they're putting radiant heat in the first floor. So that's basically what this floor is for. Is, is It's just for a mass to hold the heat. Alright, so this is the house right here. This is where we'll be pouring Monday. So we already did the basement floor and the garage floor probably about three months ago before the house was even built. And now we got, like I said, this first floor we're doing on top of the plywood. All right, so this front door right here, this is gonna be our access. You know, we're gonna to have to back the concrete truck in, stick a chute through the door. And then from there, we're gonna to have to wheelbarrow everything. It's just the only way to do it this time of year. So this is it guys. So radiant heat, inch and a half thick. We'll be matching that top. You can see that top plate right there. That's gonna be top of floor. Same with all those other two buys right there. You can see they put a, a strip of styrofoam or insulation around that perimeter edge and that's to help hold the heat in the floor so they don't get much, much heat loss out through the wall. So we got this one really big room here. Got a little room there and then it looks like maybe a bedroom over there, some closets. Another entry door there. And probably a probably a bedroom here, I'd, I'd say, that's gonna walk out onto a deck eventually. Another deck there off the big master living room floor. We, now we're going to wheelbarrow right over these tubes. The wheelbarrow, these tubes are pretty, pretty rugged. We've never, we've never punched a hole in one. You can see they staple them right to the floor. And we'll wheelbarrow right over them. All right, so it's the day of the pour. We got 1,600 square feet of space here to pour. We got eight yards of concrete. Remember, it's only an inch and a half thick. So a yard of concrete goes quite a ways. Now, I got me, Darren, and Luke here. And then I called in a couple extra guys to wheelbarrow for us just to make it go a little bit faster. There's nothing really fast about doing these floors. But if you get a little extra help, that, that makes a big, big difference. So I, you know, we network with these guys. If I need a little help, they'll come in and help. And they're in the concrete business too. So if they need some help, they know they can always call us. So we're starting back up there in that, in that bedroom. And we're going to get these little rooms out of the way first before we get into the big room. And that'll just help hopefully get the concrete truck back a little bit faster versus starting in the big room and then finishing up in the little rooms. But as you can see, we can wheelbarrow right over those tubes. Those tubes are really rugged, you know, and as long as you're not crazy and, and uh, hitting them with a shovel or something like that, you're not going to really poke a hole in them. And they are under pressure, so there's a pressure gauge on them. They filled them with air. So if you did, by chance, poke a hole in them, at least you'd know that you did. I've poured, I don't know how many of these I've poured over in the last 30 years, probably a thousand of them and we've never poked a hole in one so if that tells you anything they're pretty rugged so we're up into the big room now we get all those little rooms done um just showing you the process here in case you know you guys that do floors if you've never done one of these if you run up against one it's a little bit of a process and it's like i said it's always nice to have a little extra help or for you guys thinking of building a home and you want to use radiant heat as your heat source this is this is one way it's done is right in the floor itself 
I know there are some builders and contractors who staple the radiant heat up under the plywood and then they insulate it from below like that. But I think this is the most cost effective way and the, the best way to heat the floor and heat the house is putting it right in the floor like this. And you, it's not that hard to staple those tubes to the plywood. You just need, you know, a, a heating guy to lay out your zones for you. And this is, there's more than just one heating zone here. There's probably two or three of them. So we're up there straight edging. We're kick screeding, as you can see. How we screed. Uh, me and Luke over there just kick screeding that one area. A wheelbarrow of concrete, you know, goes quite a ways at an inch and a half thick. It'll cover, you know, 20 to 25 square feet. So it doesn't take too much for those guys to get too far ahead of us. So we like to keep up with uh, leveling it out and screeding it as fast as we can when we do these floors. Otherwise, we'll be pulling a lot back. Now, I guess you could, I mean, some guys will use gypcrete when they do these floors. And what gypcrete is, it's like, a, it's a really liquid, like a self-leveling type of concrete. And it's usually pumped into a floor like this with a, like a two-inch wide line. The reason... There's not much gypcrete done up in my area anymore. Is gypcrete's pretty expensive. I can come in and do a a concrete floor like this with P-stone for about half the cost of what it would be to hire some guys to come up here and do a gypcrete floor. So they would basically just, I mean, do it similar to the way we're do doing it. They would pump the concrete in there. It's kind of self-leveling. They move it around with a, you know, a squeegee or or a rake or whatever and it just kind of self levels up to the top of that plate and that's basically how gypcrete is done from from what I've heard from builders that I've done these floors for now you know back when they had gypcrete done years ago is they couldn't quite get the gypcrete quite as level as we could get these floors like this and it didn't the gypcrete just didn't retain the heat quite as well as regular concrete does and, you know, concrete was a lot less expensive. So there's three things right there where uh, doing it the way we're doing it is a little more preferable than doing it with gypcrete. We probably do, I don't know, 25 to 45 of these a year like this inside a house. Um, just regular radiant heat floors like in the basement. This one had radiant heat also. I mean, we do those kind of floors almost every day it seems like uh, for regular concrete floors with radiant heat but the ones on top of the plywood up here on the first floor not everybody does these they'll use some other type of heating system As you can see we're getting down there now we got over half the house done this whole pour from start to finish took us about two hours so that's why I sped the video up quite a bit. I didn't think you'd want to be sitting through two hours of this. But I wanted to give you a really good idea of just what's included in one of these floors and the process and the time it takes to get one done and do it right. We try to make these floors just as flat as we possibly can because this isn't going to be the finished floor. They're going to put some other type of flooring over this. If It, it could be the finished floor, but you'd want to pour it a little bit thicker if it was going to be the finished floor so you could saw some expansion contraction joints in it and help control the cracking. This floor will have some random cracking. We're not going to saw any joints in it, but you know, they'll just let the floor cure out and and crack wherever it's going to crack. And then the guy, whoever comes in and does the tile or the hardwood or carpet or whatever they're going to do, will just patch whatever little shrinkage cracks they have at that time and you know, you'll never see it because it's going to be covered over with some other type of flooring. And you can see we're getting down, getting down to the last little piece of this. We're using just a, a regular 3000 PSI concrete with a 3-8 stone in it. And we call it a P-stone. So it's a pretty small rock. It's a pretty small aggregate. And it's pretty easy to pour only an inch and a half thick with this 
this type of mix. It's also got microfiber mesh in it, just for a little bit of reinforcement. But we can get it pretty smooth with a bow float. Now we'll end up we'll end up finishing this either with a power trowel and getting it you know somewhat smooth, fairly smooth, or just by finishing it by hand. And if I'll have another video linked at the end of this video so you can check out how we finish floors like this by hand. And I'll also have another one about a power trowel so you can see how a floor is finished with a power trowel. Um, I didn't I didn't video us finishing this one because I have a lot of videos about finishing concrete so you can check those two videos out at the end to see how we do that. So we're just finishing up here. We've got just about a wheelbarrow or so left we got to finish up. I'm straight edging into that closet and then that's the entryway then I'll kick Darren and Luke out of there and I'll just finish it up with a little four foot straight edge myself and then that's what it takes to pour a floor like this so I mean how many of you guys pour floors like this let me know down in the comments and then if you if you haven't you know if you've ever got called for one but didn't dare bid a floor like this let me know I can I can help you out with the bidding on stuff like this and again down in the comments guys if you're thinking about getting into the concrete business like I am a flat work business you know I got an email list down there plug your email in there and I'm coming out with that program so I can help you guys get started in your own business and just show you step by step how to get started so it'll be it'll be a good program to get into and Yes, there will be a cost of it. It's going to take me a lot of time to get it all put together. But um, for someone wanting to start out in their own business, it'll be well worth it. Because when I started out, you know, I didn't have any help. I didn't have any idea what I was doing. I made a lot of mistakes. And I just want to, I want to help minimize those mistakes for you guys and make the process go as quick and, and as be as successful as you possibly can when you start out. So that's how you pour an inch and a half thick concrete floor over radiant heat over plywood in a house for someone who's going to heat their house with radiant heat guys. So again, check out the videos about how we finish floors like this at the end. Like the video if you like it. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet. I come out with videos every Monday and Friday about all kinds of concrete flat work. And we'll see you on the next video guys.